coming up on this edition of Southwest TV News. 2017 will be on the record books as one of the hottest and driest we've experienced in Southwest Saskatchewan in years. And now that autumn has arrived and the days are getting shorter, we're still enjoying a string of mild days. The first of six scheduled leadership debates for the Saskatchewan party recently kicked off in swift current. Five candidates bringing various levels of experience are vying for the top job to lead the party as Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall steps down from provincial politics in January. The Saskatchewan Abilities Council has been a household name for 50 years, with roots in communities across Saskatchewan. Now in 2017, the organization is moving forward with a rebranding of its name and logo to Sask Abilities. Thanks for joining us here today. Following a hot, dry summer across southwest Saskatchewan, Environment Canada is filling us in on the long-term forecast for winter. 2017 will be on the record books as one of the hottest and driest we've experienced in southwest Saskatchewan in years. And now that autumn has arrived and the days are getting shorter, we're still enjoying a string of mild days. And in discussions with Environment Canada, we'll continue to see a milder airflow until the winter season arrives. Our models are suggesting from mid-October to mid-November, we think the flavor is going to be what we see this week. That is milder than normal. Now, it may not be as, as, uh, as warm, uh, mild as what we're seeing this week, but we think that certainly the, the models seem to suggest the Americans are saying the same thing, so that we see that um, the pattern for the next month to, to, to after Remembrance Day looks, uh, looks pretty, uh, uh, pretty, pretty mild. Now, in the longer term, beyond that, um, uh, we, we're seeing some uncertainty as the, the issue. We, we had, everything was looking like uh, El Nino warmer waters in the Pacific to bring a milder than normal winter. It, it's, we've backed off of that. It, uh, the waters have cooled off. We think a neutral to a, a kind of a weak La Nina is what our call is, which generally means, um, I mean, no guarantee as how the winter is going to be. We think the, the flavor of it may be, uh, uh, suggests something that may be a little cooler and maybe um, uh, than normal, uh, but not not as if painfully cold, uh, not like a, a strong La Nino, which would clearly make more Arctic air. So we think there will be a little bit of back and forth and up and down. Just to give you an idea, we see in southern Saskatchewan, for example, in the last 20 years where we've had a similar situation, that is um, a weak La Nina, a neutral to weak La Nina. For example, 12 of those winters were, were cooler than normal and eight were milder. So it's not as if it's like a, a guarantee. The short-term weather forecast is calling for sunshine across southwest Saskatchewan with daytime highs in the mid to high teens. We would take a fundraiser that they do every year at the universities and we'd extend it across a whole week here in Swift Current in our own community. Over the next several weeks, Saskatchewan party leadership debates will be held across the province. And the first one was held here in Swift Current. We bring you some of the highlights in this report. The first of six scheduled leadership debates for the Saskatchewan party recently kicked off in Swift Current. Five candidates bringing various levels of experience are vying for the top job to lead the party as Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall steps down from provincial politics in January. Speaking to a crowd of Saskatchewan party members, each of the candidates answered questions on a number of topics, from the provincial budget, the PST, to Indigenous issues in the North. Alana Kosh became the first female deputy minister to the Premier in 2016 and says her work in the public service sector, involvement in agriculture, and serving as a school trustee gives her a well-rounded portfolio of experience for the leadership run. Well, you know, we've been on a great path for the last 10 years. Brad will put us on that path. It's quite a legacy. I want to build on that path. So, you know, that's a key part of my uh, campaign is saying I, I bring new energy, new perspective, new ideas, but we're going the right direction. We need to be focused on growth and making sure that that growth, the purpose of it is that we have a better quality of life here in Saskatchewan. So that's the key message for my campaign. That's what, that's what I'm putting out there is why people should vote for me. Scott 
Scott Moe has served as MLA for the Rossler and Shelburg riding since 2011, holding portfolios of Minister of Environment and Advanced Education, and is hoping his rural roots and key campaign issues will get the top votes in January. Well, we're committed to uh, balanced budgets, uh, re reinstating the PST exemption on insurance, for example, uh, crop insurance and, and life insurance and health insurance has been one of the campaign platforms that we have. We're also very focused on on increasing our exports uh, out of the province of Saskatchewan, as, as that is what we do. And ultimately, as that export dollar goes up, uh, it creates careers in our communities right across this province. Tina Beaudry-Meller of Regina is a familiar face in politics since 2016. As a former board member of the Saskatchewan Arts Board and most recently the Minister of Social Services, she hopes Saskatchewan party members will consider her their favourite for the leadership job. One of the things that I'm really interested in this race is um, bringing young people into our party. Um, I have a particular interest in that. I have a background in post-secondary education. And so that's an area that I'm really very passionate about. So I want to see our party grow and I want to see young people get engaged and involved in our party. And that's something that is really important to me. I also think I bring a bit of a fresh perspective on a number of issues. I th think you'll hear from me some new and innovative ideas or approaches to things. Um, and I'm hopeful that that is something that also attracts people to me. Ken Chevaldeoff is another familiar name in the leadership race. Serving as a Saskatoon MLA since 2003, he's held various cabinet postings, from Minister of Crown Corporations to Minister of Sports and Culture, and believes he has the passion and the vision for the job of party leader. I have many ideas uh, that I've come forward with, like uh, increasing uh, rural internet. That's something that I heard here in, in Swift Current, an area very loud and clear, and I, I'm pledging to uh, increase uh, through Saskatel uh, the uh, internet speed by 225 percent. IT, for example, uh, is, is a growth industry in, in Saskatchewan as well. I think we got to work uh, very close. And, and also you know, the new immigrants to our province. They are very entrepreneurial. They, they want to, to start businesses and, and, and bring more of their, uh, their family and relatives here. So I think that's something that we got to work very closely on as well. Gordon Wyant of Saskatoon rounds out the candidates vying for the leadership job. In MLA since 2010, he feels his legal background and hopes for the growth of the party make him the best choice. Well, you know, we're talking about the founding principles of our party. We're talking about what makes this part, what, why this party was developed in the first place. And we're talking about going back to first principles, talking about those founding principles, talking about the reasons why the party was founded, and going back to those principles to make sure that as we move forward, we use those principles to build on, on what we've accomplished over the last 10 years. And I think moving the party back to the centre is very important for our ongoing electoral success. And that's really what we're talking about. Other scheduled debates will be held in Melfort, Saskatoon, North Battleford, Weyburn and Regina before the election of a new Saskatchewan party leader in January. For over 12 years, Southwest TV News has provided the visuals for the defining moments in our community. Support your community and help us to continue our work. Support our sponsors by watching the ads on YouTube and by clicking the ads on our website. Pennies per click, which will help us continue to bring you the award-winning news coverage you've come to expect from Southwest TV News. The Saskatchewan Abilities Council is going through a rebranding process. We find out more in this report. The Saskatchewan Abilities Council has been a household name for 50 years, with roots in communities across Saskatchewan, offering employment opportunities and other worthy programs for its clients. Now in 2017, the organization is moving forward with a rebranding of its name and logo to Sask Abilities. An announcement which was simultaneously made at each of its branches across the province, including Swift Current. We've been known well and wide as the Saskatchewan Abilities Council across the province, across many communities, and serving thousands and thousands of people over the years. And based on that strength, on that history, we've done a, a rebrand. Uh, taking the past, taking the current, and planning for the future. And so the name is refreshed. Saskatchewan Abilities Council becomes Sask Abilities. New colors, new logo. That, and the colors very much speak to the vibrancy of the organization, more importantly, the broader community and the uh, people that are 
depicted in the logo speak to a community. And that's what we are so proud is to be a part of every community of so many communities in Saskatchewan. Duzan further adds that with the new name of Saskabilities and its updates to its website and mission statement, will all further enhance the organization's commitment to its clients' well-being and partnerships in the community. Well, I think the messaging reflects modern-day language, uh, bringing us up to date. People with disabilities uh, often refer to themselves as people experiencing disability. Disability does not define who people are. Ability defines who people are. And that's a powerful message, and that's what we focus on, hopefully in ourselves and in each other, is what we can contribute and bring. Through its eight branches across the province, Sask Abilities operates numerous facilities and other programs, including Sarcan and other municipal recycling depots. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at southwesttvnews.com. And be sure to follow us on a range of social media. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews. Thank you.